All right, we are recording. Welcome back to Medical Monday, everybody. Hey, everybody. We're going to be going over something that's very near and dear to us, so much so it's actually in our logo. It's in our logo. It is. Sciatica. Sciatica. We are going to talk about sciatica today, you guys. Uh, very common, something we see almost every day in our yep. office, and it is debilitating. It can be. You know yeah. A lot of times, um, it comes from three major things. Yes. There's either a herniation of a disc or degeneration mm -hmm. or stenosis. We'll talk about yes. what all those really mean, but really what it affects is a nerve. And you see a nerve yes. over here and it affects it up top, but you feel the symptoms shooting down. down and it could be down your leg, down yes. your arm, either yes. which one. And there are different patterns, the different patterns, uh, you know, from our perspective, the different patterns, let us know where it's coming from what nerve specifically in the low back is being affected because it's going to follow that pattern and possibly not go as far as it can or just stay in a focal area. So there's a lot of different areas or levels that allow us to better assess here in the office where the initial where problem is. is. Mm -hmm. One of the big things is with sciatica or back pain or really any condition is we want to get to the root of the problem mm -hmm. and find out what's causing it so that we can treat the cause, not the symptoms. Yes. In this case with sciatica, the symptoms vary depending on where the cause is. Mm -hmm. So that's very good for a detective. So what yes. we do to find out where the problem is. These nerves come out at different levels of your spine and it'll affect different levels of your leg. Mm -hmm. So that helps us know where to pinpoint your treatments mm -hmm. to. So if we were Sherlock and Holmes, or Sherlock Holmes, would you be the doc? And I would be Sherlock, who, who would be who here? Which one's the coolest one? Hmm. Depends. It depends. I don't know, but I would be it. Okay. All right. <laughs> but yes, we have to or know where pop. it's coming. Who smokes the pop? Uh, I think Sherlock does. That's a cool one. You'd be Sherlock? I, I guess. I'd be Doc. I'd have to be the nerdy one. But you are a doctor, so it able... fits perfect with you. Oh, it does. It does. It does. But here it's a little yes. representation of kind yes. of what's going on with that there, nerve. This nerve is, the sciatic nerve is actually the biggest nerve in the human body the biggest nerve in the human body. And that's because it actually gets fed or attached to by different levels like we saw a second ago from the different patterns that we see. And so this nerve actually passes through, this is your backside, your derriere, posteriore. Yep. Um, so it passes through your backside, right? And very close to the hip. And what is most um, clinically present is what I'll describe it as is the piriformis muscle. Oh, yep. So the sciatic nerve is the biggest nerve in the human body. We're talking about sciatica. And one of the biggest culprits when we talk about sciatica is this little bitty triangular shaped muscle called the piriformis muscle. And we see different things in about a third of the population each time we see the different cases where you have the muscle itself behind Lonnie's head here. All right. And the sciatic nerve goes under that muscle. But there are about a third of the population as well, where the sciatic nerve splits into two and part of it goes through the piriformis muscle. And then behind my head, you can see here where the entire nerve goes through a uh, part of the piriformis muscle. And all three of those are normal. normal. They're just variations of normal. Yes, they are variations of normal. And they're true. Green eyes, blue eyes, mm -hmm. they're just different, but there's not a problem. Either nope. one of those mm -hmm. are just fine. It is just, it's just a common find, like a, like a, Random, you're like, oh, cool, you're part of this third. So anyway, yes, those are, the pure formus muscle is a huge culprit in this process, but. It's also normal. one of the things we key in on for treatment, because <gasps> treatment. if you looked at that, there's three different ways your nerve can come mm -hmm. through that pure formus, mm -hmm. um, either halfway or all the way. So that's really two thirds of the population is gonna have issues that can be treated by working on the pure formus. Yes, and so we've talked about the sciatic nerve itself, and the piriformis muscle, how it comes through, but there's also a lot of anatomy that's involved because you talked about some of what's described as arthritic type yep. changes, degenerative disc disease, as well as uh, arthritic changes to the joint spaces themselves. Mm -hmm. So the spine consists of multiple individual bones. In the lumbar spine, it's five individual vertebra and or bones, and there's multiple joints involved in this process. Uh, three to, or five, or actually six joints, just depending on how you want to calculate those because of how things touch. Um, and so you can have arthritis at any one of those touching points in 
the lumbar spine. So there's just so many different factors involved in affecting the nerves and the structures in the lumbar spine that contribute to sciatica. This picture of the lumbar spine, as you see, there's multiple different holes. This is where the nerve comes out. This is where the nerve comes out. Mm -hmm. This is where the nerve comes out. Yes. That's what we were talking about earlier as far as helps us determine exactly which one of these holes is having problems because it'll manifest the symptoms onto the leg, yes. whether it's the inside of the leg, the top of the leg, the outside of the leg, or even down into the cat. It really helps us determine which area is having problems. And oftentimes it's, it's multiple areas, yes. to be truthful. Yes. And then where those nerve roots come out, like you can see a better picture here, right? We have the nerve root, you can see it coming yeah. out here. That, that joint space should be very fluid and open, but in arthritic and stenotic type conditions, which are the arthritic type conditions we were talking about, it starts to get inflamed and irritated. And that joint space actually becomes dehydrated and less effective in regards to the movement. And it's actually caused by lack of movement in that joint space. Yeah. And that's always one of the determining factors as far as if somebody's gonna continually have pain, it's because they continually lack movement. Once you get movement in there, you can turn a joint space that looks like this into this. But it takes movement to get that fluid nice and healthy and happy so that it actually moves. With all joints, motion is lotion. You need to be able to mobilize those joints, mobilize those tissues that help move those joint spaces so that patients can be very healthy, ha happy and healthy. Yes, that's very true. And I love that statement. Motion is lotion. It's, it, it just describes it all. All of it. So, and there's other aspects of degenerative change in the spine, right? We talked about the sciatic nerve and the piriformis. We talked about the facet joints just now, how they stack and they can become irritated. But then the disc spaces themselves can actually become degenerated and cause issues, whether it be from a disc herniation or degradation or breaking up down of that space. So as you can see here. So when our posture changes, you should have, there's a normal set posture you should have. And this is a picture of the spine. So this is actually the back part. Now you can touch your back and feel these bones back mm -hmm. here. And this is the front part that actually is towards your stomach. These discs in between here, they're not for load bearing. They're actually for just lubrication and movement. However, when our posture changes and we come forward, this becomes load bearing and therefore, yes tissues, the fluid goes away. Yes. When that tissue and fluid goes away, then you no longer have lubrication. So it gets very painful and stiff and you don't move the way you're supposed to. And it'll actually pinch on that nerve back there. Yes, it will. And we see it all the time. We work on this all, yeah. all the time, all the time. And it takes time. It does. You know, a lot of these symptoms don't happen or, or, or you know, uh, arthritic changes don't happen overnight. And so it's important to understand that sometimes it takes a little bit of time to get you the relief and make the changes like Lonnie's mentioned that you can actually reverse some of those arthritic changes with motion being lotion. Um, right. And so there's a lot of things we can do at home to try and work through this process and actually start the process of reversing some of the degenerative change that we know that we have. And some of those things are, I like to describe it as rise. I made that okay. up myself. Patent um, pending. <laughs> Uh, and so rest is so important. You have to allow yourself to recover. Ice is phenomenal at reducing the amount of inflammation in that area. Stretching, you've got to get motion in those joints. So as uncomfortable it is, know your limitations and just move and stretch in those different directions. Stretching to discomfort is different than stretching to pain. Very different. So discomfort is something we can get ourselves to very safely and not cause more pain. But once we stretch ourselves or exercise ourselves to pain, that's when we know we've done too much. Yes, you are correct. And exercise, stretching and exercise do somewhat come together, but there is a lot of times a different goal at the end of stretching versus exercising. So, um, but they're very important that you can do at home to actually elicit some movement and get going. Let's that's what you want. Okay. The more movement that you get, the better your long-term outlook is going to be because we know that the number one indicator of uh, acute pain and chronic pain is uh, modifications of exercises or movements. Basically, you not doing something because it hurts, okay? We need to not do that. We need to move and do things slowly and safely to where it doesn't hurt and you can continue on your life doing your normal functions. Yes. Uh, one of the best stretches slash exercising type regimens is yoga that you can do. I found this picture online in regards to it describes itself as a 15 minute stretches to help with sciatic pain. And so it could be something as simple as just a 15 minute, know your limit can do type stretch every day to help work through that process. Um, and the other aspect is 
limitations, yep. right? Do this, not that. See, and Lonnie got the green light and I got the red light. See, what we want to do is move, <laughs> but not to pain. What Correct. we don't want to do is move to pain. Move to pain. There it's very go. simple. Well, it's very yes. easy. But Definitely. you know, there's other things that, that we always sometimes talk about as far as um, certain movements. If certain movements cause pain, if they uh, elicit a sharp shooting pain down your leg, then we also want to not do those. But we want to refer back to those yoga poses. Uh, those are very simple ones you can mm -hmm. quickly find on Google, but they very effectively stretch out all the muscles. Dr. Gabby talked about the piriformis, but there's multiple muscles yes, within this muscles. region that controls your lower back. Yes. They're very, very easily stretched. Yes, they are. Very, very true. And it's true. A lot, you just have to find out what irritates the problem. Mm -hmm. And that's also part of the do this, that, that, modify things, use pillows. There's just so many ways to take into account that specific um, advice. So we've done exercises and stretching at home. We've iced, we get some relief. It's still present. We're talking about acute versus chronic. Um, and so the next step truthfully is to go out and get help. Seek professional we help. We need help. We, you know, cause you, there's things that you know, and there's things that you don't know. And so we need to work with other providers. Physical therapy is one of the most effective ways to actually correct and work through regarding sciatic pain. Yep. You've got to incorporate strengthening the muscles that are weakened due to the changes that have occurred. And so it's very, very important for um, exercise to occur during any type of process for sciatic treatment. Definitely. And that goes back to the key point, you know, motion mm -hmm. is lotion with joint spaces. So yes. You need to get those joints moving and need to have those muscles that move those joints be very strong and effective in what they're doing so that they're not, if your sciatic nerve runs through your piriformis and your piriformis is dysfunctioning and clamping down on it, then that's a concern. So you want to stretch and strengthen all the muscles that are going to be moving your back or if your sciatic nerve runs through it. Yes. You are correct, absolutely. The other things are like over-the-counter medications, prescription medications. These should all be short-term, regardless of if they're over-the-counter or prescription, because side effects are always a concern. Unfortunately, um, some of these medications that are over-the-counter that people get are used more and more for long-term use. Yes. There's about 85,000 Americans die every year just from taking what's called NSAIDs, like a Motrin, a Leave. What they do is they actually um, cause ulcers that bleed in your stomach. They're great for three to five days, but anything beyond that, then you have a problem that you need to get professional help with and not be on Motrin, four and five Motrin for the last 10 years. It's just not healthy. Yeah, it, it's not. It, it actually does, it, it's helpful to get you through the day and day, but long-term use is actually less effective. At, at, at pr that process and, and getting things where they risk need to is just not worth it. Mm -hmm. And the end result, typically, in regards to a lot of those, uh, you know, outside of this office, you know, yeah. uh, is surgery, right? What happens is we just keep pushing through, we keep masking it, we do some physical therapy, not quite enough, and surgery, which is what we try to avoid here. We don't ever want to see it get to the point to where we can't get movement in that joint space. Um, and so it's, it's, Kind of upsetting. <laughs> well, it is, it's, and sometimes you know uh, surgeries are needed. Of that, course, absolutely, times, they are needed sometimes. But you know they're oftentimes self-inflicted. Mm -hmm. It's like if it hurts and we just don't seek the help, don't do the movements, mm -hmm. it's just going to get worse. Yes. It it doesn't um, subside on its own. Mm -hmm. You know the North American Spain, uh, Spine Society noted that improvement is very high in cases of arthritis, the degeneration within there. Mm -hmm. It just takes the proper therapies yes. so that you don't end up having to have it just locked down. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we talk to patients is about goals. They're so important and finding out what, you know, what brought them into the office and sciatic patients. It's really, are you ready to correct the problem? Yeah. Because if there's degenerative change, there's degenerative change. We just need to know that so that we can work through it in regards to preventing it from getting worse, essentially that's when we can stabilize it. Absolutely. And so there's so many things here in the office that we can do for everyone out there. We're so excited to uh, talk about it some more. We talk about it quite often. And one of them being a regenerative type therapy regarding PRP in the paraspinal muscles specifically. So those muscles that target the lower back mm -hmm. as far as for movement, and yeah, we want to stretch and strengthen those, but oftentimes patients are in pain. How do we get them out of pain is by accelerating the process of an, the injury. What I mean by that is your own blood, you know, when you, you bump yourself, you bruise, that's blood in there. Well, that blood has a purpose and that blood is to get rid of the damaged tissue and start having new tissue formed. So what we do is we actually take your own blood, 
We concentrate it down and put it in these dysfunctioning muscles as though it was a bruise. Mm -hmm. So what it does, it creates that inflammatory response of taking down the scar tissue that doesn't function very well and is very weak and start creating good functioning tissue that's strong, but also elastic so that you can't get that movement. That's enough. That is a phenomenal explanation. I'm not even going to try and comment on that. <laughs> so, and then also we can support through this process as you start to strengthen, go through different activities. We talk about knowing your limitations mm -hmm. and knowing the difference between discomfort and pain when doing activities. Spasms happen. Muscle spasms are something we see in just about every patient that comes into this office. And if you've been compensating for a long time dealing with sciatic pain, then that truly is an indicator that muscles have been overworking and muscles have been underworking. So we do trigger point injections based on uh, a botanical based uh, anti-inflammatory anti to you help know, reduce those spasms. When you look at the spine as far as what the sciatic problems are, it's basically a pinching of the nerve and that could be through degeneration or, or anything. Your body's natural response is to lock down. It doesn't want that spine to move because it's gonna be irritating that nerve. Mm -hmm. So with those muscles locked down, you're not moving that joint space and you need to, it's that motion is lotion. You gotta yes. get it going. So first things first is we gotta melt that muscle just like butter. Just like butter. And you gotta calm it down so that we can start getting some movement in there and start changing that joint space itself. Yes, and that's a great analogy as well. These trigger point injections phenomenally help to melt those muscle spasms like butter to get the relief so we can continue to make the progress that we need to make to get you out of pain. So absolutely. And then also, you know, there's a different aspect. We talked about the regenerative medicine side of, of the back pain and sciatica center, but there's also a huge other aspect that incorporates some of the things we've talked about, which is physical therapy. Uh, it's a huge aspect of what we do here in the office because there's going to be some limiting factors in certain muscle engagement as well as certain movements. And we need to actually trigger those muscles to work properly, strengthen those muscles because we want to get you relief, but then we also want to stabilize it because we never want to see patients in here for the same problem twice. That's how I, I literally explain it. So we have some phenomenal equipment that is uh, social distanced as well as open to allow for the best observation to make sure that the, um, you know, the patients are doing the exercises properly and we're able to uh, definitely challenge patients through that process. And then we also have spinal decompression. We talked about arthritic changes and compression regarding, uh, you know, a lot of things that happen. So we need to open up those joint spaces so that we can get better movement in those joints. Spinal decompression is one of the most effective ways to actually open up the spine and get movement in those individual joints. Disc rehydration is always mm -hmm. important and that allows it based on the traction and opening up of the spine. Some of the other photos we've seen, mm -hmm. uh, there's a, a great chair called the wobble chair. Mm -hmm. And what that does, it makes the body wobble back and forth. So those joint spaces do move because we talked about the PRP. We got to get those muscles relaxed. We got to get them strong, but then we got to move. We got to move them. Move. And then we get the chairs, the wobble chairs, the disc, um, uh, decompression help with those movements. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very important. And I love one one of my favorite aspects whenever I walk into the office and checking in on patients is, especially in the wobble chairs, patients don't realize how long it's been since they've done some of these basic movements. And it's so true. We a lot of times take advantage of the fact that we don't make some basic movements on a, on a, on a regular, regular basis. basis. Yeah. We don't just move in a, in a standard direction. So it's great whenever I see that. And then the last aspect is near and dear to my heart, and that's chiropractic adjustments. These are so important in regards to sciatic patients. And I say that so truthfully in the sense that if, if the spine is not aligned properly and there's pressure on areas and mechanically things are not moving properly, then it's just going to continue to fester and occur. And so the adjustments are so important, just like why you need to rotate and align your tires in your car. You have to have that proper movement. So you have the proper recovery. So you have the proper muscle engagement. These are such big and huge aspects. And what's beautiful about what we do here is that you don't have to do the rough popping and cracking and noisy aspect of it. We actually have specialized tools that allow us to adjust you um, much more gently than a manual adjustment. And if you prefer the manual adjustments or know that you've responded well to those in the past, we absolutely utilize that as well. So best of both worlds. Yes, absolutely. And best of both worlds here in the office. See, that's we, a good thing. We have everything under we one roof. We do under one roof. But you know, Medical Monday is all about your education. It's all about you knowing what the conditions are, um, what causes those conditions, as well as what you can do at home, 
other treatments that are available mm -hmm. just so that you can feel more comfortable with your health because a part of what we do as healthcare providers is we should be able to talk to the patients, yes. communicate your health, your health needs, so that you can make the best decisions for you. Yes, patient education is, is probably one of our, our top priorities to make sure that you understand what's going on. So we do hope you enjoyed this Medical Monday about sciatica. We will see you next week. Yes, we will. There's a Monday every seven days, <laughs> and we get to be a part of that. Thanks Thank for being here. Thank you all. Yes. Are we still recording? Are we still recording? Oh, is it?